two elderly men set on fire near UK mosques. A shocking in incident has occurred in London and Birmingham, where two elderly men were set on fire in separate attacks near mosques. The suspect allegedly sprayed a substance on the victims before setting them on fire, causing severe burns to their faces and arms. The victims, Mohamed Reyes, 77, and Hashi o Odoa, 82, suffered severe burns, and Reyes's condition was serious but stable after a skin graft operation. The suspect, Mohamed Abakar, reportedly from Sudan and 28 years old, was arrested and charged with two counts of attempted murder. The police are investigating if the incidents in London and Birmingham are connected and are keeping a, an open mind as to any potential motivations. During a time when Muslims around the world are preparing for Ramadan, the community is understandably concerned about their safety and the potential for copycat attacks. So... This is a huge story that happened this past week, understandably so. I mean, it's a horrific attack, not only to do this in general, but to do this to people, members, and citizens that are this elderly makes it a whole different level of abhorrent. But I had a couple of thoughts about this. So when you first hear this story, I think very reasonably you assume, okay, this is an anti-Muslim attack. And especially when you see the footage of how the the story that was a little bit bigger was what happened to Muhammad Reyes. And so when you see the in the video footage, how he's dressed, he's dressed more traditionally. It's just very visibly a Muslim man, right? Um, and so you're like, okay, this must be an anti-Muslim attack. And then they ended up taking the person, the suspect, into custody. And then it turns out the the suspect, his name is Muhammad Abakar. And not only that, but based on some reporting that I have seen on this, he was actually arrested when he was inside another mosque and the other worshipers were there and they recognized him as the suspect. And they were like, you got to get out of here. They, they, they detained him until the police could come on all this stuff. So there's, I saw photos from CCTV of this man sitting in the mosque in the middle of prayer. Like this man, I don't know if he currently is a Muslim, but he clearly was at some point because he's praying in like, you, you can tell this man has prayed many times before. He's praying in the correct way. Like, personally, I think a lot of people that didn't grow up or had some familiarity with it, the, they wouldn't know how to do the Salah the correct way, right? But you can see him, like, finger out the whole deal. So that leads me to believe that this is part of his background, which makes this more interesting because then it's like, okay, well, this isn't the kind of xenophobic anti-Muslim attack, like, we typically see but then i thought you know it could still be an anti-muslim attack yes it still definitely could be from one sect to another so i tried to look into the mosques where these attacks happen and try to see if they were part of any sect or particular denomination and i couldn't find anything that was that specific or that identifying because based on what I was reading and, you know, just my judgments looking at the website, I'm like, these just look like pretty standard Sunni mosques. I could be wrong. So I was, or is it that he's, he doesn't like a group from a different ethnicity? Because according mm. to the victim, the man approached him and was like, hey, do you speak... Arabic and he said no I only speak Punjabi and then he sprayed him with the substance and lit him on fire according to some reporting I've seen so with uh, all this in mind Armin what do you what do you think about this how do they not have a motivation by now the guy that arrested the guy and everything you don't know the motivation based on the re public reporting that I have seen there has been no update with 
mm. his motivations. They, there was an update that he, they actually took a suspect into custody, but that was it. It's possible that the guy is just a loon. There's, you know, that's also a possibility. It could be a racist attack. It could mm -hmm. be an anti-Muslim attack. It could be a specific sect attack. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the guy could even be an ex-Muslim who has bad experience with Islam. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. he has like, maybe his life was ruined. Maybe he converted to Islam and his life was ruined. We have no idea. There could be yeah. many, many options. There's many things it could be. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is that it's important for people who be like, oh, why are we looking for the motivation? A man was like burned and that's the only thing that matters. You're wrong. Because if you want to avoid, if you want to avoid things like this happening more, you have to go and find the root of the problem. You have to identify what this, what this is, you know? And also if you want to re um, reduce copycats, then you have to identify what's happening here. Right? Yeah, exactly. I didn't like, I don't, I don't think like, you know, many Muslims were identifying this as being an Islamophobic attack, right? But, and they were, they ended up potentially being wrong, right? However, it's an easy mistake to make, you know? Like, that's the first thing your mind will go to, is a, a man looking like that, being attacked in this way, people... In front of a mosque, and the previous in victim front... had the same thing happen to him. I feel like it's a yeah. reasonable assumption, because I remember you and Horace Sultan were talking about this on Secular Jihadists, and I really yeah. disagreed with what Horace was saying. I can't quote him verbatim, so, you know, like, go take it with a grain of salt and watch it yourself or whatever, because I don't want to misquote yeah, him yeah. and be un uncharitable, un un right? But he was basically, like, lambasting Muslims for jumping to conclusions. I'm like, even with this guy clearly having an Islamic background, I feel like it's a reasonable conclusion to make. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Yeah, but it's a it's an easy mistake to make. It's a it's a reasonable assumption. That's what you could say. Yeah. Um how is I, I, I mean, I don't want to say how is he doing because I know it's bad, but is he survive? Is he oh my his god. Condition? Oh my God, I was reading about this and I actually, when I was reading about this story, like I actually started crying. Like it made me so upset. Like, cause I've had a very serious burn injury before. It's the worst injury I've ever had. And so I know uh. how painful and excruciating this is. And I was just thinking like, I was really lucky when it happened to me. I was young and I could bounce back pretty quickly. But these are like really elderly men. And oh my God, like the pain of a burn injury, what you have to do for it to take, what you have to do to take care of it, to prevent infection. The most dangerous part of a burn is not a burn. It's the chance of getting infected while you're healing. And these men have to be like bed bound. They're like an ICU, like in excruciating pain. Reportedly, like this man right here, like he can't even open his eyes. He's in so much pain. Like just thinking about it, I started crying because it's for no reason. Someone did this to him for no reason. And when you're that elderly, your body's not going to be able to heal as easily and as well and then after you heal burn injuries the depending on where the injury is the way that the scars heal can really restrict your mobility and your ability like capabilities and it's just horrible it's absolutely yeah. horrible okay i don't want to think about it anymore it's bad it's horrible sorry i can't imagine the pain yeah it's yeah such a bad injury to have. Yeah. Okay. God, what a nightmare. What a I know. I hope nightmare. this they throw the book at this guy. I hope they throw the book at the guy that did this. I hope the people around the old man like managed to support him or raise enough money to, to I don't know, heal him as much as is possible to heal. I don't know. Yeah. I was anyway. uh 
reading about the reaction from the community, it sounds like they have a really tight knit community that's like really rallied behind them. So that's lovely. Hmm. Okay, yeah, oxymoron saying when you have a, a superficial burns, you feel hell a lot of pain, but when they are deep, the nerves get damaged, you don't feel pain, but at the at that point of time, your life is already hell. But no, even then, you feel a lot of pain because if you have a lot of burn at the, at the place where your nerve your nerves are, you know, are getting damaged for you to feel them, then right adjacent to it, you're feeling less burn and you feel a lot of more pain there so i you're still going to get that pain too you know what i mean so let's say i'm getting such a degree of burn here that i don't feel anything anymore well right next to it i'm getting a lesser that lesser amount of pain uh, burn that comes with all the pain associated with that Do you know what i mean yeah so you get yeah you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says, get our free blasphemous art.